And welcome back, everybody. We are here for our second stream match of the day for World Cup VGC of Pokemon, hosted by Victory Road, sponsored by El Gato. I, myself, and Costa. But right now, I am joined by lovely Gabby. Gabby, how are we doing? How are you feeling? And has this been very exciting? Because it has been for me. I really had a lot of fun watching the previous game. I was uh, surprised to see that it went on to a game three because mm. for yesterday, a lot of the games were very quick and decisive. So um, I'm hoping that we see more of these close matches as we close up the top eight, because even though a majority of the games were decided prior to this broadcast in terms mm -hmm. of the outcomes, uh, it's always nice to see things finish off, you know, really, really closely as it's a good indication that you know these teams that have made it to the top eight and who are progressing onto the top four even uh just have that skill bar uh, it's very very well done yeah uh, and i mean at this point it makes a lot of sense we just see that top level uh quality vgc uh coming out from all sides you know that everyone's trying to battle the best that they can so that they can reach that semi-final section as everyone's hoping to try to go and crown themselves as the first World Cup uh, VGC champion, essentially, for Victory Road. As uh, we're going to be going ahead and going, of course, into our match, which is going to be between Thailand versus South Korea. And at the moment, I think if we refresh that page very quickly, um, we will see that South Korea at the moment is uh, essentially have gone ahead and won, and they have qualified to the semifinals with a 4-2 at the moment, as this stream match is going to be the final one, Gabby. It is, and congratulations to South Korea for on to the top four um you know like i was just saying this match really determines if it was a 4-3 or a 5-2 win uh for south korea so even though the matchup has already been decided uh in terms of who's moving on i am very curious to see uh how uh, kalpa sathorn and won seok jong are going to play out this match uh knowing that there was so much on the line you know when this was recorded you know yes we're airing this now but uh like lou was saying earlier you know, when this match was recorded, this could have been the decisive factor um, in determining who was going to move on or not. So it should be very exciting for us, us to watch. It honestly will be guaranteed. I mean, I'm very excited. I'm very pumped about it. I just wanted to make a very quick note, Gabby. I, I'm, I'm looking at a hip out on it. I'm not sure if that's an error or if this is calculated oh. from Papon Jirawat versus uh, Sanjun uh, Cha. I, you know, I, I didn't even see that. It didn't even register. Now that yeah. I'm looking at it, I think that's also a Zamazenta and not yes. a Zashin. So um, I would have loved to get more context on what happened in that game because that was actually a best, a true best of three. It, there's also Colossal on uh, wow. Seung Hoon's team, which hasn't even been seen really in Series 10. So uh, I wish we could have had a, a magical lens or a spectator mode so that we could have watched all these games. Um, but I think that's for Papon and Seyung Hoon to uh, tell their lovely war stories of that glorious battle. Yeah, exactly. So, Game Freak, please assist us. But anyways, of course, you can see <laughs> from both sides, um, both of these teams have brought some very creative uh, teams as we're expecting to see something of a similar caliber right now. We're going to go and uh, check out... Team, uh, not team preview, apologies, player profiles from both of these trainers as uh, we're going to be starting off with a one sec, Jean uh, bringing a Groudon, Incineroar, Tapu Koko, another Venusaur, Entei, and what do you know, a Porygon 2. So yeah, a very exciting team from Juan Sayok. Also, good thing to highlight here, he was the winner of the Trainers Cup tournament, which I believe was a South Korean ex exclusive tournament to determine who going to represent South Korea at our world equivalent tournament this year. So uh, congratulations to him. Uh, it's always interesting to see these South Korean players uh, play in circuits like the World Cup because normally they're pretty isolated from uh, VGC results otherwise. Uh, yeah. So, and also the the team that uh, Jong is running is really interesting with the Tapu Koko and the Entei in particular. You know, I think we've been seeing more Trick Room support pop up over the past couple of weeks. Okay. Um, and the nice thing about uh, Jong's team is that the Porygon Two can uh, really support the team in both 
a trick room and non trick room fashion. And unlike some other teams we saw yesterday, where it was like you go for the trick room or your team just uh, ceases to function for the remainder of the match, you know, I think Jiang's team is going to be a little bit more flexible, which is important when you look at the matchup. Oh, yeah, definitely. As we're going to be seeing, Kappa Safon bring that Eternatus, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Regieleki, Suicune, and a Volcarona. Once again, the Firewater Grass Call striking again, uh, accompanied by a Restricted, which is so fascinating to see because I think there are a couple of different sets that you could be running on this Pokemon. Uh, there are, and I am very curious to see how this is going to play out. You know, I think that the uh, Volcarona in particular is a Pokemon that's been picking up in popularity, but primarily alongside Xerneas teams, because the way that Volcarona and Xerneas play in Series 10 is very similar. Uh, seeing it next to Eternatus, I think, is a interesting thing to call out, just because Eternatus is more of a straight damage dealer. Uh, but then you do have the Pokemon that like to support Xerneas in the form of the Incineroar, the Rillaboom, the Aleki, and to a lesser extent, the Suicune. So all really important things to keep an eye out for in this matchup. And, you know, if you want to take a moment to talk about how these teams will pair up as we enter team preview, I think that uh, it's really going to be up to Jiang to determine you know, how he wants to approach this game. You know, I say this a lot with these teams that can use Trick Room, cannot use Trick Room. Uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of pressure on the person who has Trick Room as the speed control to decide, you know, do I want to use the Porygon too? Do I want to set it up so that my Groudon has a better chance at success? And, you know, as we take a look at the team preview screen and we get a, a little bit of a sneak peek from Jong's point of view, uh, once we jump into that, uh, knowing that the Groudon is carrying Choice Band, I think really dictates how he's going to want to play this team. Groudon's only going to be able to select one move before it's forced to pivot around. And yep. uh, in that situation, you want the advantage of going first and you really want to have the twisted dimensions up for support. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him pick like the Porygon 2 or maybe like a Venusaur or an Incineroar or something as a lead, set up Trick Room and, and then lead the way for Groudon to do what it wants to do. Yeah, exactly. As we, we, there's nothing on um, uh, their opponent's side of the field that could go ahead and pick up a one-hit KO on this Porygon too, because uh, not only is it bulky, it's got that Aether like that is so accustomed to be run with this Pokemon. Uh, the only way that I could see perhaps uh, the Porygon two Trick Room being stopped in a way is maybe if uh, their opponent has access to any sort of taunt or even maybe rules. But you're gonna have to try to bring the Rillaboom in as well, so you could try to exert that fake out pressure too. Yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned both Taunt and Roar since that's really what the Suicune probably brings to the table for this team in particular. Uh, yeah. Not so much Taunt, but definitely the Roar. Mm. Um, and I think that if... Uh, if that is something that Kalpa is worried about in this matchup, you know, leading Suicune is a pretty safe option overall since there isn't too, too much on Jiang's team that's going to be able to deal big damage to it. You have to worry about the Venusaur, but Suicune's just so naturally bulky that yeah. most of the grass type moves that, it's carried, that it carries will be a two hit knockout, if not yeah. possibly three, depending on what grass move it has access to. Uh, so even though, you know, the Suicune looks like it's in a bit of a tough spot here with the sun from the Groudon and with the Venusaur on the field, uh, it should have at least one or two turns to uh, use whatever moves it prefers in the uh, situation before it's forced off the field. Yeah, as so we're going to be seeing the leads, uh, Kalpa is opting to bring the Eternatus and Suicune, whilst Jane brings the Groudon and Venus also. Being able to br be up front uh, quite a bit on um, Jane's side, uh, of course, leading with the Groudon Venusaur. The Chlorophyll is in, uh, you know, activation right now. It will be the fastest thing on the field. It may even threaten the Suicune, but Suicunes do tend to be quite bulky nowadays. They are, they are, and I, I'm more curious to see what the Eternatus is going to do as, as while a Dynamax Cannon will do a ton of damage here, I think that the Eternatus is in great risk right now, staring opposite that Groudon. Yeah, as we're going to be seeing the Helping Hand from the Sweet Coon, and uh, for that, it gets hit with a Grass Knot from the Venusaur Life Orb boosted as well, as we are going to be seeing a Berry Recovery on the Sweet Coon. It does look to be that to be that uh, Citrus Berry, apologies, as the Eternatus, it is now boosted by a Helping Hand. It may even have a Life Orb. It goes for the Dynamax Cannon. Gabby straight into the Drowdom. 
but it does not pick up the KO. Browdon uh, being quite resilient there, hanging on whilst being able to connect with both Precipice Blades right there, just shy off of a KO on the Suicune, but it's more than enough to deal a job powered by that band uh, on that Eternatus. I, I'm really surprised that the Helping Hand missed out the knockout there, but this is probably an indication that the Groudon has been trained in its HP and possibly special defense as well. Uh, knowing that Groudon is holding Choice Band does mean that Groudon, you know, has a bit more of an attack investment just by nature of holding that item and the fact that it boosts the attack power of its moves. So you can, you can go for some more defensive training, and as a result, you know, something that I would consider to be probably like a guaranteed knockout on 80 or 90 percent of the metagame right now a helping hand boosted dynamax cannon from an eternatus just wasn't able to deal enough damage and the fact that kalpa was caught off guard by that and it did lose the grout on that turn and is going to lose the suicune this turn uh barring something like a protect i think is something he's going to have to keep in mind in game two and i i really like how john's also switching that grout on out recognizing hey that one attack was really all i needed right now i can go ahead and keep it safe until it has a better opportunity to go for those big hits again yeah, as we are going to be seeing the Suicune opting to go for the Earth Power there, but not going for the Grass Knot as it may be trying to cover for any sort of incineral switch in there. Uh, once again, seeing the recoil from that Life Orb as the Fiery Dance comes out from this Volcarona. does connect into that incineral slot right now, which previously was, of course, that Groudon. It does get a plus one in its special attack as it did have, I believe, half a chance to be able to do so. So at this point, Volcarona, it's starting to set itself up for a potential threat right now for Zhang's side. It is, but you have to remember that the Incineroar on Jang's side of the field does have Fake Out this turn. Uh, could also get access to multiple uses of Fake Out, depending on what it does the turns after, as we've seen many Incineroar feel comfortable pivoting up and down and left and right. Um, I think that Kalpa, as tempting as those Fiery Dances are, has to target the Venusaur this turn to avoid getting hit by an Earth Power. Volcarona is still at full health, and, um, you know, it's not it's probably going to be able to take one of those naturally as it is fairly decently bulky uh, but if Kalpa gets a little bit too greedy and maybe tries to go for a quiver dance or something or um, it, it could it could turn into trouble he he's still has his back against the wall and even though this Volcarona getting stat boost is going to help it's not necessarily going to be decisive now, as we're going to be seeing the Porygon 2 switch in and the Earth Power once again coming out from that Venusaur goes into the Incineroar, does guarantee a two-hit KO whilst also dropping its special defense, the minus one, as the Volcarona yet again now goes for the Fiery Dance into that Venusaur. It does, of course, pick up the KO. It's not only a plus one, it's not only super effective, it is also powered by the Sun. And we see that throw chop right now from the Incineroar uh, connecting into that Porygon 2. So Zhang from their side of the field, they're going to be able to bring the Incineroar in right now and even potentially threat with that Trick Room setup, which I think is what they might be trying to look forward to with that Groudon in the back. Volcarona is much faster than Groudon, so I absolutely agree, Costa. The thing to keep an eye out for here, though, is what this Incineroar does and uh, which Pokemon gets flinched on Kalpa's side of the field. I think that you target the opposing Incineroar if you're worried about it having access to Taunt or another way to stop Trick Room. It's possible that another Fiery Dance plus a Flare Blitz in the Sun would do enough damage to knock out Porygon 2 outright at this point. Um, or you target that Volcarona if you're worried about, again, those Fiery Dances starting to add up. I mean, to Jong's benefit, even though this Volcarona is consistent attacking there is a chance that it won't get that special attack boost but uh, oh. <laughs> <this ain't it. laughs> commentator's curse of course uh you know being able to calibrate itself there gabby from your end we see that it dealt so much damage onto that port onto the throat chop uh, does connect from one Incineroar to the other on Zhang's side to try to stop any sort of parting shots. Flare Blitz from Zhang's Incineroar does target down the uh, Volcarona, does so much damage. Of course, it does always hit neutral due to the fire, but typing and the sun is scored by it. But more importantly, Gabby, we do have Trick Room now on the field. 
And because Trick Room is up, Zhang is going to be able to pick up these knockouts pretty easily at this point. Um, if he's super careful about how he plays this, you know, recover on Porygon 2, plus maybe a parting shot from this Incineroar or something similar to uh, weaken the attack power of the opposing Incineroar into the Groudon, at which point you try and get a Precipice Blades or two, but uh, you, you just essentially try and get it set up so that you can win quicker with Precipice Blades, but win regardless. And I really like the twist mentioned so late on in this game because Kalpa is trapped into his last two Pokemon and as a result is forced to protect this Volcarona so that it won't be damaged throughout throughout the remainder of this trick room. Yeah, and Volcarona doesn't commonly carry that protect, so it's quite interesting to see that it is more, um, uh, you know, like trained and fashioned in a set so it could try to exert that damage rather than just go for the redirection purely, as of course we do see the Porygon 2 uh, more than uh, capable of picking up a KO onto that Incineroar, and all of a sudden it's a three versus one scenario. Volcarona, I don't think is going to be able to pull this one out. No, and uh, it's a shame because I think Volcarona had the dimensions remained untwisted. Uh, could have had a shot. I mean, it was certainly doing great with those fiery dance, but uh, Porygon 2 uh, was within a two hit knockout range from, I believe it was only plus two in the sun at that point. So really good information for both these trainers. But I think things started to go south for Kalpa in that game one when the Groudon landed the double precipice blades and was able to one shot the Internatus after that helping hand Dynamax cannon. And going yep. into game two, I think that you just have to play knowing that you are going to have to chip damage down onto Groudon before you go for that big you know, final attack almost, I want to call it. Um, and in this situation, you know, fortunately, Suicune can chip away at Groudon a little bit. Uh, usually carries a water type move like Scald. And even though that's going to be weakened in the sun, I think you have to run that Scald more so for the opportunity to burn the Groudon at that point in time. Uh, because then the combination of the little bit of damage you're doing plus the burn uh, will give you a lot, uh, you, it will give you the opportunity to survive that Precipice Blades. Um, and Intimidate as well from the opposing Incineroar could have also been a way for that Eternatus to remain on the field, but you do risk Incineroar taking big damage as well on that switch, and that's possibly something that Kalpa just did not want to risk in game one. Not knowing information like we do about this Groudon, for example, that it is uh, choice banded. Yeah, exactly that, and I think um, uh, Jane was just able to go ahead and have that uh, dominance of uh, offensive pressure that they were able to exert during just that lead in game one. So um, over on uh, Kalpa's side, they're just going to have to be able to try to better control that scenario because that damage is just so, so crucial. You're already down with the Eternatus. Turn one, you didn't even pick up a KO there, even though Dynamax Cannon, Life Orb boosted, plus Helping Hand, it is insanely powerful, but... I think that Groudon is trained, so it is bulky, it is slow, and it is ready to dish out all the damage it can if it connects with both of the Precipice Blades. That is absolutely correct. And at where we are right now in the Series 10 metagame, I think that training your Groudon that way is really beneficial because uh, you are going to be running into a lot of these faster teams like the Shadow Calyrex that we've seen absolutely dominate this week in the in the competition. Uh, yeah. And knowing that your Pokemon Porygon 2 is your Trick Room Setter of choice, you can usually figure out who has access to Taunt where, uh, and you can make that matchup so much easier when you know that your Groudon is going to move first. Yeah, so we are going to be seeing a reconfiguration from both of these trainers. Kalpa on their end are going to be bringing the Volcarona and the Rillaboom as a lead. Whilst over on James' end, we're going to be seeing the Groudon once again, but now escorted by an Entei, which of course can completely ignore fake out flinches. And it can also ignore speed to a certain extent, as we got a sneak peek of Jong's team preview, and uh, it's holding a choice scarf. So that Ooh. is already a very good adjustment for Jong moving into this game, too, as he has the opportunity to go for some really big damage from this Entei. Uh, doesn't have to worry about fake out, doesn't have to worry about the Rillaboom's grassy glide, you know, picking up a knockout like you have to worry about with other faster Pokemon like Regieleki. And I think more importantly, can take advantage of the sun that Groudon brought out onto the field to uh, do some big damage to that Volcarona prior to any Quiver Dance or other boosts it's going to go after in this turn one. 
Yes, we're going to be seeing Groudon actually go for the switch out. It does bring Incineroar in. It will be dropping the attack of that Rillaboom to minus one. But guess what? It's just going to be able to completely negate that with its own switch out into uh, its own partner, Incineroar. So Volcarona does seem to be at the moment still on the field as well as Entei. So Volcarona does have to be very cautious of this Entei going for any sort of rock type move. But no, we see Eruption coming out, Gabby. Something we don't commonly see on Entei being run with that special uh, investment rather than the physical as the Volcarona is just going to try to start setting itself up. It goes for the Quiver Dance. It is at plus one uh, throughout the board when it comes to special attack, special defense, and speed, and it's able to get that tiny bit of recovery with Grass Terrain. It is, but it could be flinched this turn by Fake Out from Jung's Incineroar. Uh, and really, nothing's going to stop that Entei for going for a second Sun Boost Full Health Eruption, which I absolutely agree with what you just said, Costa. You don't see many Entei that are built in a special manner. Uh, and it, it makes me wonder a little bit more about this Entei. Maybe it's mixed in a certain sense, because having access to Sacred Fire, I think is just, it's one of the best moves in the game because you can can have that 50% chance to burn, but for now it's locked into eruption and I don't think it really needs to change. No, I mean, I don't think Jane uh, thinks that either. So they are going to go for the fake out into uh, Kalpa's Incineroar, flinching it for this turn and just able to go ahead and set off another eruption with Entei just to add to that uh, residual damage that's able to deal to that Incineroar, that chip damage, should I say. So at this point, um, Entei just going ahead and just clicking buttons. Yep, and that's what Eruption does very, very well. As many people are familiar, I think, with Torkoal, who's the most common Eruption setter in the Sword and Shield era. era. Uh, but Kalpa's really in a tough spot because he can't protect a second time on Volcarona, guaranteed. Uh, he can't fake out the Entei, even if he did have access to it at, because of Inner Focus. Uh, you can't really intimidate Entei either, and also Eruption is special. And if you try and switch around any of these Pokemon on his side of the field, uh, whatever is going to come in is going to take so much damage from this attack. Oh, an Eruption just missing a double KO there, actually. The Incineroar does get its Berry proc. As it's going to be able to recover, it does seem to be a Super Berry there. Um, as the Volcarona is now going to be going on the offense. It goes for the Fiery Dance into the Entei. A plus one in the sun still deals so much damage over half. As we are going to be seeing Kalpa's Incineroar move first right now, which is quite interesting. Um, it goes for the Parting Shot into the Entei. And it is going to be pivoting out for a new Pokemon on Kalpa's side, Gabby. I don't think the Entei necessarily wanted to stay on the field after taking that part, uh, that fiery dance, so the parting shot isn't as big as it would have been otherwise. I'm more curious about these two Incineroar and what Zhang's Incineroar is going to go for this turn, because Flare Blitz into the Volcarona, that's oh. a KO. That is a KO indeed. Just wanting to go ahead and guarantee the KO onto that slot, not allow this fiery bud to just uh, let loose and go completely crazy when it comes to um, damage and setup because at this point you want to try to limit the Volcarona as much as possible. It's a kind of in the scenario of that you don't want your opponent to get their setup going and further uh, get additional boost going. So of course it does allow Kalpa to bring in their own Incineral once again. They do have fake out pressure on the field when it comes to uh, the slot for Incineral. So it is quite interesting to see what this Entei will choose to do now that it's at half of its HP's worth and it still is locked into Eruption. It still is locked, which is why you have to switch it out. I think that looking back in game one, uh, Volcarona was the biggest Pokemon that we saw threaten the Porygon 2, so now that it's been knocked out, I think if Jong is hoping to set up Trick Room for Groudon, you know, later on in this game, this is the opportunity to bring it out onto the field. A Dynamax Cannon is certainly going to hurt Porygon 2, but as it is fairly bulky and we haven't seen the reveal of Spoon or any helping hands on Kalpa's side of the field, I think that you can assume that the Porygon 2 would stick around for at least two turns, and it's possible that John doesn't even need to worry as much about Trick Room at the, on this game. It's possible that you could just use Porygon 2 to stall out a couple of games, allow your Incineroar to position around, get Entei back out, and up, out on the field, and then go for big damage with a different move. 
Yeah, as Porygon 2 is going to be switching in directly to that Dynamax uh, Cannon uh, Life Orb boosted, of course, from that Eternatus. Incineroar doesn't try to target into the same slot. It goes for the Throat Shop into Zhang's Incineroar, but we do actually see a reveal there from Zhang's Incineroar actually having U-Turn rather than Parting Shot. It may be a potential indication of item, but who would know? It could also be a bluff, but nevertheless, it will not be stopped from that throw chop as it is not a sound based move. Honestly, I think the U-turn is more of a acknowledgement of many Incineroar that do run Throat Chop than anything mm. else. That will guarantee you the ladder switch that allows a Pokemon like Groudon to come out onto the field on a turn where uh, other without taking any damage. And, you know, we saw the damage calculations from the Eternatus in game one. We know that Dynamax Cannon is going to do less than half of its health damage to it. We know that there's only so much Flare Blitz can do from the Center Roar. Uh, this is the perfect opportunity for Groudon to get a press of blades in while Porygon 2 is setting up Trick Room. And that puts Kalpa in a really difficult spot because you want to stop the Trick Room threat be, uh, from being set up as it was the reason why you lost game one but if you ignore the Groudon you're going to be taking big damage from the Precipice Blades and Incineroar and Eternatus will be knocked out at which point you're down to your last Pokemon. Honestly Jong doesn't necessarily need Trick Room anymore to win this game. Yeah, as we're going to be seeing Eternatus uh, being more than well aware of that situation, goes for the Protect there. We do see Incineroar trying to go for a move there, but actually missing. I'm not sure which move it tried to go for, but it doesn't matter because it just got KO'd. Uh, Gabby, it's out of the game as Porygon 2 is just going to go ahead and uh, actually recover rather than go for Trick Room. So like you just mentioned, um, Zhang may not be feeling a necessary reason to go for Trick Room, but more crucially, wants to get that HP back up for their Porygon 2. Uh, unfortunately for Jang though, Kalpa will have the opportunity to send the Rillaboom back out onto the field and reset the grassy terrain, so it's likely we're going to see this Groudon disappear again for a little bit, as a priority grassy glide is going to deal a ton of damage to it, and the Prespice Blades uh, won't really, won't necessarily appreciate the grassy terrain being set up. But yeah. still, Jong in a fantastic position here where uh, he can find a way to try get try and get Entei onto the field if that's a way forward he wants for this match, you know, going for the Choice Scarf uh, boost speed and going for those big attacks. Uh, or he could set up Trick Room by Porygon 2 and use the Incineroar and the Porygon 2 to knock out the Rillaboom as neither of those Pokemon are going to be taking a lot of damage from a possibly intimidated Grassy Glide and it looks like that Porygon 2 also has access to Ice. Yeah, as we are going to be seeing the Incineroar once again now coming onto the field for that Groudon like you did note there, Gabby, it does not want to sit in front of this Rillaboom. As the Eternatus uh, will be opting to go for the Dynamax right now. Dynamax Cannon, should I say apologies. It will be targeting the Porygon 2. It wants to try to bring its HP down as much as possible. We see the Life Orb, but yet again, recoil damage. And the Rillaboom actually going for the knockoff, which will be getting rid of that Eevee Light as um, the uh, Porygon 2 will no longer be able to have as much of that defensive bolt on both sides of defense, but Zhang does have that fake out access with the Incineroar and the Rillaboom slowly yet surely is having its damage output reduced right now. You don't even necessarily have to go for Trick Room given that Rillaboom's going to move after the Porygon 2 and Incineroar bar and Grassy Glide. You could just double into it here with two attacks, remove it from the field, and then you have Groudon to handle dealing damage to the Eternatus. Um, I think that Jong is in a very good spot, and even though Kalpa is trying to reduce Porygon 2's bulk by getting rid of that uh, Eevee Light and putting it within possible KO range from a Dynamax Cannon, um, Eternatus just has so much to worry about in the form of that Groudon, and unless Kalpa can keep this Rillaboom safe with a Protect this turn, or uh, which, which is tough, which is a tough thing to call out, as a lot of Rillaboom are running Assault Vest now and do not carry Protect, um, it, then it's definitely going to be Groudon's game to win. 
Yeah, it's good to be seen that Grassy Glide going to the Porygon 2. Not enough to pick up a KO, but the same stands for that Incineral's Flare Blitz onto the Rillaboom. Very close to doing so, but guess what? The double up is more than enough. You do see that Ice Beam that you made note of before, Gabby. Uh, more than enough to pick up the KO, of course, getting rid of that Rillaboom from this game to uh, leaving this Eternatus on its own, just shooting out cannons as much as it can. It does pick up a KO on this board onto finally for Kalpa's side, but uh, this may be a little too late at this stand point because I think Kalpa's strategy right now, or should I say win condition, will be hoping for those Prespus miss. Uh, mi oh, I said Prespus misses instead of Prespus blades, yeah. Well, I, I mean, effectively, that is the move you're hoping for, right? You're not yeah, hoping yeah, yeah. for precipice blades, you're hoping for <laughs> precipice mist. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I definitely agree. And a thing, something I find curious about this Groudon is that, you know, given that it is Choice Band, it does have room for other moves. I'm wondering if Groudon has a more accurate ground type move so that, you know, you don't have to play the precipice mist or plus precipice blades game. <laughs> No, but we are going to be seeing the Incineroar up to go for the Snarl, but no Precipice miss. We see a Stomping <laughs> Tantrum going ahead and outrageously picking up the KO there and awarding Zhang that very dominant 2-0 win versus Kalpa. A Stomping Tantrum still isn't the most accurate move. I feel like I do need to call that out after uh, poking front at Precipice Blades a little bit there. Uh, uh, but yeah, the fact that Groudon was able to on a more accurate move than Precipice Blades, um, I I'm pretty sure it is, uh, is really important, I think, for that win condition. So uh, very well played by Jung. Uh, South Korea finishing the week 5-2 to Thailand and just showcasing why they are a very strong team to be moving on into the top four. Uh, even though there were a couple of times where Kalpa was able to find openings and get damage in and, and try and threaten uh, Jong's team, he just was right on top of the momentum every single turn. And it, I think it was a really tough matchup for Kalpa overall as a result. Uh, yeah, I'll completely agree. I think the, the fact that you have to go up against uh, a Groudon that just sits there and just wants to click damage buttons and just go ahead and it runs away essentially with so much damage. It's got the support of the Incineral. You could use that as pivoting action. And then you've got the Porygon 2. Porygon 2 making its a comeback essentially. Um, being able to just be that uh, phenomenon of a bulky Pokemon just setting up trick runes going for recovers and dealing a bit of damage every there, here and there, whenever it can. But um, I think it was just able to hand such an advantage of matchup, like you said, for Zhang's side, as we just saw, uh, unfortunately, there weren't a lot of options for Kalpa to go for, I feel. Yeah, and, and that's just, again, the luck of the matchup, unfortunately. Um, I wish we got to see more of that soon. Knowing that it has access to Helping Hand uh, was really intriguing, and it seemed like a really fun pick for that team. Uh, but this was just Groudon's game to win. Um, on paper, I, it's just un impossible for an Eternatus to out-damage a Groudon, and uh, Jong kept it very safe on top of all that, so very well played by Jong. Yeah, honestly, it was from both trainers as well. Nevertheless, a uh, huge congratulations to South Korea for going ahead and progressing into the semi-finals, uh, where everyone is targeting to go for. Unfortunately, huge commiserations to Thailand, but they have fought valiantly. They've done so, so well for their country, for their teammates, and for, in general, VGC, because I honestly have had such a huge pleasure being able to see uh, some lesser-known countries all over the globe just able to perform so well and work so good as a team together. Yeah, definitely. So uh, that's it for this round of the World Cup by Victory Road, sponsored by Elgato for uh, right now. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with yet another exciting match. So please stay tuned, everybody.